Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. I hope everyone is doing well. In this video, uh, I'm going to discuss uh, on a new uh, topic, uh, planar kinetics of a rigid body force and acceleration. Uh, if you refer to our textbook, Engineering, Engineering Mechanic Dynamics, so we have finished basically our previous chapter, planar kinematics of a rigid body. Uh, the main objective for this chapter is uh, students should be able to analyze problems involving kinetics of rigid bodies, inclusive forces based from Newton's second law. That's the, the main objective for this chapter. Alright, uh, the content for this chapter are first, uh, we have to know what is moment of inertia is all about. Uh, what's that? The second is planar kinetic equation of motions. Basically, it's a basic derivation of uh, of of translation yeah? and rotation. And the fourth one, the third one is equation of motions or translation. The fourth one is equation of motion, uh, rotation about a fixed axis. And the last one is equation of motion, general plane motion. For general plane motion, it is, is it is a combination of translation and rotation. Okay. The combination of the subtopic number three and subtopic number four, and it goes to subtopic number five. And basically, uh, for this subject, uh, it is being taught by four lecturers, uh, me one of them, and uh. It also being taught by uh, Dr. Hasnon. You can see his video uh, by clicking this uh, link right, and Profnik as well. Another one is Profnik. This one is Profnik. You can find their videos in YouTube. And another one is uh, another lecturer is Dr. Isatul. But I couldn't get his, uh, oh sorry, I don't get her her YouTube link or any uh, blog for for her lecture notes. Alright. So basically, in this video, I want to uh, 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 explain a bit on the relationship between this subtopic. Why we have to learn this one, mass moment of inertia. And what the relationship between this, basically mass moment of inertia to another subtopic. Uh, what the relationship between so basically mass moment of inertia is very important when dealing with rotational motion uh, rotational motion All right so uh, i believe that when you google uh, or you search in google or in books you can if you type moment of inertia basically you can find uh, these two uh, uh, terms mass moment of inertia and polar moment of inertia so what is the difference between these two so basically mass moment of inertia uh, this is what we are going to learn this in this chapter is a measure of how an object receives uh, angular acceleration eh? you know that angular acceleration is given by or denoted by alpha And but the polar moment of inertia is measure how an object receives again torsion. Yeah. This one is angular acceleration, right? So, so here I want to explain uh, a bit uh, in easiest way uh, the difference between uh, the importance of mass moment of inertia. Let's say you learn this one in static. Even in static, you learn this one about uh, translational motion someone is pushing the blocks eh, linearly to the right let's say this is a block a has a mass of 20 kilograms and block b has the mass of 30 kilogram right so in static you say that to solve this problem you have to Use the summation of summation of force is equal to ma. 
but in static basically a is zero so finally you got f summation of f is equal to zero but in this case in this case you have a same shape same size of block a and b but the difference is only the mass let's say you want this block accelerate at a is equal to one meter per second square similar to b you want it to to accelerate at one meter per second square as well the same guys of course logically need less force isn't it less force to push this block a so that it can accelerate at one meter per second square but for the second block or block b the same guys need a bit more force so this guy need more forces to push block b so that it can accelerate at the same magnitude which is one meter per second square you can see that by referring to this equation so ignore ignore the rate the, the friction force friction force first eh? so we are we are because we want to see the the logical of this this uh, this example if you fix the a at one bit per second square and you have a different mass of course the f should be different So what's the thing or what is the, the variable that makes the f is different? So by by fixing the the the, 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 the value of a and then the, 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 the variable should be mass. Mass is basically fact the amount of force needed to push this block. Correct. So for linear motion or transla translational motion, the resistance is mass. The resistance is mass. And then in all equations, so in all problems, basically mass is given. Right? Mass is given. So to solve the problems, dynamic problems or static problem, this is not difficult because mass is given. But when we talk about rotational motion, rotational motion, let's say you have a identical wheels. This one is identical. Alright, this wheel, so I do not, it's as A, this one B. Let's say you want A is fixed in the middle. Right? This is the axis of rotation, point or point of rotation. And then you pull it, and then you want, you say that I want to have alpha is equal to 1 radian second, sorry, per second square. But for block B, eh, for block B, you want it, you, 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 the point of rotation is somewhere here, right? Above the center of, of the circle of the wheels, eh, because the center is here. And then you pull it, you pull it so that you say that I want to pull it so that my alpha is similar to block A, which is one radian per second square. So what do you think, what is the amount of force needed for the same guy, I mean for this guy, so that it can pull the block A and B with the same alpha? Okay, Try to think logically, eh? physically you can see that you can imagine, for block A, he needs, this guy needs less forces compare compare 
to the force needed by this guy when he pulls the block B. Right? So for rotational motion, you don't use the Newton second law F equal to MA. You have to use the Newton second law, which is summation of moment is I alpha. So either IG or IO. You can discuss it later. But here, similar to the previous uh, translational motion, when you fix A, sorry, you fix alpha. So, the variable that the effect The motion is alpha, sorry, is I. I is mass moment of inertia. It's nothing, of course, of course, mass A and mass B has nothing to do with this equation. Of course, of course, in some cases, mass is is important. It's a fact. Eh? But for these cases, when you shift a bit the point of rotation, this one doesn't play a role to solve this problem. Eh? So that's why the importance of mass moment of initial in in uh, in a rotational motion okay because the value of i or mass moment of inertia for this case is different with the main mass moment of inertia for the second case so i b sorry i a is not equal to i all right so we have finished to uh, to discuss on the importance of mass moment of initial. All right. So for this video, basically we have uh, reached uh, 13 minutes, so it's quite big, basically uh, the size of the video. So so we stop it here now, and then we will will continue our lecture with the derivation of how we are going to calculate the mass moment of initial. So thank you very much, very much, guys. So. Basically, for this video, uh, the notes and uh, and everything is based on uh, engineering mechanic dynamic RC Hebler uh, which, uh, version 12, eh? version 12 or 12 edition. Thank you very much. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.